All right, man. What is up, everyone? What is up? Planet Xbox Podcast, Weapon Wheel Podcast, finally back. I apologize for the hiatus, but uh, leave it up to Xbox to bring us uh, back and uh, hopefully consistency consistently with some news. But today's a special episode. Uh, but before we get to the reason why it's special, let me shout out uh, my uh, co-host, Iron Lord Podcast, Gaming Addict, Lord Gaming Addict. What's up? How you doing? Pretty good. This should be a very interesting episode. Yes, I know. I know. Uh, very interesting. And uh, we got uh, Tim Dog in the house, man. What is up, man? How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, happy to be here. Appreciate the invite. And, uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about, so get to it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I know we, uh, he's he's here for a time, not a long time. There's a lot that I got to um, ask you. Uh, I, a couple of things I want to focus on, but with the other stuff that came through, because I asked you way before this other madness came about. It, so I now have to like kind of like hone in on that. But um, I just want to see if there's a little bit of Tim Dog still in there. Um, <laughs> Tim, man. Is it Tim Dog or P Dog? <laughs> Yes, and dog. Uh, so Tim, um, and, and uh, we're gonna get to the main stuff because you've been you've been talking uh for a while. You've been dropping hints, but a, a lot of people don't know whether to take you seriously, or or if they saying, "Man, this is coming out of emotions." Tim's just upset. Tim is just being like rabid. But uh, some of the stuff that are that's just taking place, I'm starting to see some of your um your rage tweets uh come out and and come to fruition. So I'm a little bit you know, concerned or, and whatnot. But so before we get to the Xbox stuff, I know you went out, you bought a PlayStation, you've been hooking it up. I know a lot of people have been gracing you with their uh, with your presence and whatnot. My question to you, Tim, uh, why uh, a PlayStation? Why 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 a PlayStation? Uh, why is why a hard switch? That's I guess I figured that's a better question. <laughs> To be honest, you know, to be honest, I think I never gave PlayStation a chance. Uh, obviously, it was an Xbox, and I was a fanboy, and um, I really didn't want to give it a chance and uh, play it, and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, you know, give it a chance, basically. It's kind of like somebody who goes into something predetermined, and it just goes to show you that could actually uh, affect things, because... Uh, I actually tried it with an open mind and I came away looking at it very impressed with some of the things that they, they do. Uh, obviously their games are beautiful. Um, but just the whole output, uh, the reason basically why I'm supporting PlayStation right now, uh, and, and behind them is strictly because they're behind console and, uh, right now, uh, I'm a firm believer that console is not going away, uh, and I'm double downing on the fact that people want consoles. Yeah. People want things done for them, okay? You look at DoorDash, you look at things, people don't want to do anything. A console is an epitome of that. It basically is something that you can just put in, you know, throw onto your TV and it, it just do wonders or whatever. And I'm all about that. So uh, I obviously feel Xbox is not doing that. So that's why I'm, you know, uh, I've migrated over. I just feel like they support console, and I'm about that. Now we well, say, well, why don't you play Nintendo? Nintendo, as you know, is a little. It's it's a little more kitty. Uh, it's you know those games are cool, but. Uh, I like the, you know, the, the, everything's on PlayStation. And the fact that I know or I feel very strongly that anything that's coming to Xbox is going to be coming to uh, PlayStation within the next two years, it's just a no-brainer, you know? I, there's, no way, uh, there's no way around it. There's nothing unique to me about Xbox when they put their games on PlayStation. And that was my main gripe. And, and, and I... I I I put my money where my mouth is, you know. That's that's the way I feel. I just feel that if you're not going to support something that I care about as a consumer, and also you're going to go against things that you you sold the vision to me and 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 30, 40 million other Xbox fans that we all wanted, 
And there's no turning back because I remember that day of the Bethesda day. I was like going crazy. Like they have to say this. And I was one of, of the majority. All, we were all like that. So we want exclusives and uh, I want exclusives. And I also want a, a, the person making the console to be about console. I don't want it to be about Steam side, side swiped and all this other things that everything other than the console. So that's my firm position. Uh, I do like PlayStation a lot, and I'm I'm still learning about it. I, I'm gonna play it this weekend when I have some time. I'm gonna possibly buy. I'm gonna buy either Hell Hell Divers or or Stellar Blade. Uh, I have to make a decision on that, but. Um, you know, basically where my wants as a gamer and and where I think things are still going, which like I, I don't think consoles are dying. I you can show me all those graphs that you know you know you you can in ten years PlayStation can come out with something amazing console that two hundred million people buy. Who knows? Maybe even more. Yeah, I I, I get it. Um my other so my thing is, because uh, you've been with Xbox, thank you, for like years, like spanning two, two decades, Start. right? Okay. Turn your mic down just a little bit, smooth, like you're kind I was, of I was an Xbox Live beta tester, so I've been there from the start. So my you're thing is, uh, I'm closer to the mic, Attic. I'm sorry, it's, but it, when it comes back, it's not as bad if, as, as you would imagine. Right. Um. The only thing I, I can imagine is that from Xbox 360, uh, I'm uh, your your back catalog. Do do you indulge in your back catalog at all? Like between 360, Xbox One, and so on, or yeah, or I mean, you I just have, new game, new game forward, so it doesn't. I don't really go back to games. I own about a thousand games on Xbox. Mm-hmm. About a, a, a own own like purchase, not Game Pass. Mm-hmm. So yeah. obviously. My catalog runs deep, but do I really go uh, back and play some games? Not really. I'm all about kind of like the new, new stuff, and and um, you know uh, I've missed a lot to be honest uh, with with PlayStation. They have some games that that really I could tell are very impressive. Like I played Ghosts, and I was just very impressed. I played uh, Horizon, and I just graphically I was. Mm just stunned like it's beautiful so you never played like none of these things like you had a ps4 or no i had a ps4 but i never really played it again i was i never liked sony i uh i I kind of uh felt that um you know down the line there was a competition and i just didn't like sony i didn't like the the fans and i just i wasn't about it you know so and, what was uh, it affected me so the biggest so because the, the thing is and how i tried to think about this logically and obviously i don't like a lot of the moves uh that xbox is making i still believe wholeheartedly and an exclusive so my thing is what was the driving factor is it the fact that uh xbox is essentially third party and producing games for nintendo and playstation um and you just rather play uh a console that has its well, own games or you just rather play xbox games on well, i guess playstation now that's the thing they're going to be coming to xbox they're going to be coming to playstation so they basically rendered their themselves useless to me when you do that now you could say oh it's only four games it's not going to be four games it's going to be everything um it's and it's gonna it's gonna be day and date Soon enough, Blade's going to be uh, a day and date. Elder Scrolls Six is going to be a uh, day, day and date. So it's just a matter of time when those games are just going to come at the same time. So uh, the driving force, I would say, is yeah, that's pretty much you made your console useless to to me when you're putting it on a, on a competitor that is extremely strong at what they do. And have a fantastic suite of games and future games, and they they do know what they're doing compared to now Xbox, which I firm firmly believe right now they don't know what they're doing at this point. So it's kind of easy for me, you know. It it, it it didn't it wasn't always this clear, but it's kind of become clear 
within the last six months, I would say to me, or the last five months. And then obviously in February when everything broke and the way they acted Mm -hmm. and the way they, the way what they went about it, they completely turned me off. And now I just like, I I look at them and, and it did just, they're they're just, I, I just shake my head. Do you, did you mind when Xbox uh, migrated to PC? You know, I did mind. I did, and I also told. I actually was in a. Uh, there was seven other people. Uh, South was one of them. Um, Stallion was another. Uh, we talked to Satya Nadella, and I was one of the few people that said uh, that I really don't. I, I said I don't think that it's going to go over well. And I could tell that their decision was made. Aaron basically said, well, what if you put it on Xbox the same day and you can get both purchases? And I said, yeah, well, that's a good idea. But um, when that whole talk started, I didn't like it. I never liked the fact that Xbox would lose exclusives. I I, I kind of like things hey, that are exclusive. You, you know what made it worse, Tim? The fact that PC started getting exclusives and not Xbox. Yeah, I just think it opened up a can of worms. And I think they did it it way too fast, too. If you look at it from people that used to, like, you know, the BGs, all these PC gamers, they all used to have Xboxes last gen. Yeah. None of them have Xboxes now. Well, listen, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Everyone's migrated off of xbox at this point i mean it's really that dire uh on the hardware side um but the fact is is like the way they went into it um was was shady as well i mean you remember crap gamer and he got killed by phil which phil says well well, you have no problems with other people playing on windows now he prefaced windows because that's what they were selling you at the time Mm -hmm. They said, we're going to be UWP, Windows. It's all exclusive. Who cares? No big deal. Six months later, their sales suck. Guess what? (laughs) We're putting our game on Steam. And you know what? There's no warning. And there was no warning that Quantum Break, a console game that they touted as an exclusive since 2013, all of a sudden goes to PC. So these are the things that kind of I've seen through the years that they continually do that, you know, I feel has really hurt them. I mean, the way they went about the PC, they should, Sony's actually smart the way they're doing it. You should, you know, you should really kind of keep it, you know, uh, staggered the way they do it. And, and eventually I could see them doing day and date. It makes sense in a lot of sense, but it's 2024. Like the the time, like it's so much as has went by, and uh, you know Xbox is part of that learning. Like people now, you've seen it done. So Sony doing it is is not like it's not like people saying, well, they're doing it and this and that. It's a lot different. They've taken their time. They've kind of not rushed into it. Whereas with Xbox, they rushed into it and pushed it on everyone. And uh, at, at a time where people weren't even used to that or open to it. And again, it's things that they, they've done this constantly. They push ahead w- bullishly and foolishly ahead with their next, you know, venture. And their next venture now is fucking PC, Xbox on PlayStation and screens. And you play Xbox, you're playing Halo on on PlayStation, but it's an Xbox screen. It's Xbox. Shut up! Like it's stupid. Um. Okay, I'm with you there, but I think the how I look at it is like now I've always had a PlayStation in in, in the household. It's never been my primary. I don't think it'll really ever be. I just didn't see myself saying, "Okay, I'm gonna get rid of Xbox and do." everything I was doing on Xbox just to reinvest into it on PlayStation. Um, I'm still going to play PlayStation. I have nothing against PlayStation. It's just that I'm only attracted to certain games on PlayStation, like their marquee games. Um, on Xbox, I just prefer to play games on it. 
you know, um, and, and that's why the chances are, you know, however things go, I'm more likely to transition to PC because it's still I still get somewhat of an Xbox like um, experience just at whatever fidelity. Now, I understand you already made it clear, like, you know, you're a console uh, gamer. I am, too, by large. Like I said, that's why this is going to be the slowest transition um ever but so i understand having it done for you you feel that playstation is pretty much still down for the cause console first entertainment first uh sony uh, at this point is an entertainment first business so they're going to put their best foot forward on the gaming side of thing i'm with you on that i i respect that me personally again it's more so uh comfort i had to look at it this way it's like okay it still bothers me to think about this idea, right? If you know Gears of War eventually comes to uh, Hellblade and stuff like that, it's not homegrown. It's not ours. Uh, how I look at it, Halo, Gears, Flight Sim, you know, Fable and stuff—that's ours. I view that as ours. Those are like birthed on Xbox, right? I, I, I still, you know, get nauseous at the idea of those like being like on PlayStation just because I'm just the I'm used to what things were. I'm a like console war gaming, right? Like that's what it, it's not even that. It's just you just don't whore yourself out like that. But in my opinion. And and it's true, but the thing is is that then I have to ask myself, and this is how I pretty much started just said I'm at a point where I think I told you in DM I was like, dude, I don't even care about it anymore. I don't even care like about gaming is not as important to me as it was like a few years ago. It's just like to the point where it's like, all right, you know what, whatever they're gonna do, whatever happens, happens, right? My thing is, to you, like, h- how valuable, what is the value in an exclusive to you? Like, f- like you have an Xbox, you play, you're playing a game, you enjoy it, you love the franchise, you, you love the brand, right? The game you're playing. What value does it hold to you of only people like you playing on this particular device have access to that game? Or if three other different devices that's not owned by Microsoft playing that same game but you guys are all playing the same game what value does an exclusive hold on you and i'm just curious well, of why yeah, does i it- think i i think that you know i think i've been lenient with it like i've i was never i was against it going to pc but then i said okay it's going to pc it's cross by that's great doesn't really affect me and you could say the same thing about playstation but when you know the history of what went down, and we all know the history of what went down, the things like uh, keeping Call of Duty exclusive DLC off of Xbox, keeping games like Final Fantasy, paying games to basically kill your system, and you know as well you've been in that in those trenches, and everyone at Xbox has been in there. For them to just say hey, I'm going to take Halo, something that's been the pride and joy of the console, something that's been associated our whole existence with Xbox, and and it's basically synonymous with Xbox, and we're going to put that on PlayStation. It's just, it, it just flies in the face of logic for, to me. And just even, even competitiveness, I just... I just can't get behind that 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 type of thinking. And to be honest, it makes me it does make me angry because I think that it's a it's a pussy move. It's you just don't do that. You raise raise Game Pass to thirty four ninety nine. Do whatever you got to do. You put yourself in a they put themselves in a position of of that that they're in because they've mismanaged. Phil has mismanaged this horribly. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no denying this. We're in, we're in the spot that, you know, there's no, there's no like defending this. So they're in that position or, or, or they're on that brink. The last thing in the world that you do is put your games like Halo, like Gears, like even Starfield on PlayStation. It just, it just, it just doesn't make sense. And I could get maybe if you put it in a Nintendo, it's a little bit different. But just the history of everything and the competitive nature of 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 everything that goes on, uh, for me, it's just 
you know, I'm just a competitive person. I'm just wired that way. Uh, I'm a big sports guy. So, and, and I've always brought that intensity or whatever you want to say. And I think that's why I've gotten a, a, a large following because I'm all about that. But then when you're going to just say, hey, I would put Halo on PlayStation. I'm sorry. That's like the worst thing that you can do. And again, they, they're full, they're full fledged ahead with it. And there's no stopping them because their minds are already made up. And I think that one of the things that Xbox has always done that's been detrimental to them is, is that they walk through the fire knowing the fire is burning in front of them. And that's exactly what they did in 2013 when they didn't go up there and they, 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 they didn't uh, say we support DRM or they, they basically went in and said we're, we're doing DRM and then they reversed. They, they, they could have did that reverse before E3. And if anything really hurt the Xbox, the biggest moment is, is at that E3, I can remember watching it or on PC or whatever, and I remember the crowd when Jack Trenton uh, or, or Jack, whatever his name was from PlayStation, announced uh, that stuff and they had the commercial. That was a, a game-changing moment. And again, it was because they saw the fire – they knew what they were getting to themselves, and then they just walked into it. And this is just another case. They see the fire. They don't care. They're going to have excuses to why. Um, and quite frankly, um, I don't think that they have any other choice because uh, they've been in such a hole that they're in such a hole right now um, that, you know, they'll do anything. I mean, they're laying off studios, and then they're saying, we want studios that get smaller studios in the same sentence that get awards and, and are, are, are highly rated, which was exactly Hi-Fi Rush. So they don't make a lot of sense to me anymore. And uh, I just I just don't trust them. And I just think that they're full of shit. And uh, basically, that's it. I, I You know, overall, if you want to go with the, a, a, a proposition of gaming, you could say, hey, I could go on PC, or you could say, hey, I can go on PlayStation. But if you say, hey, I go on Xbox, you might never get another console. I mean, you might get some type of limited edition handheld thing that was is not nothing that you're expecting. Yeah, um I I again Tim, I'm with you. Um, I think you, 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 the first thing you said the day that they, they, the, the day that this all happened was fuck Xbox. That was your, 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 your tweet. Yeah. And it made the rounds. So listen, you can have those feelings and get, and, and then maybe think it over. But at the, at the, the first moment of what they were doing, that's your truest feeling. So. I understand why you. I don't have no problem with people liking Xbox. It's just that I'm going to be real about it. When they talk about things like why they're in the position the way they're in, the things that they're talking about, I'm going to say, hey, this is what this is, and this is what that is, and this is the problem I have with that. And listen, I don't think that they're ever going to put the right foot forward from this moment. I mean, I, I just really don't have any positivity th that they could fix this. You know, maybe they can. And if they can, that's fine. And that'd be better. But I just don't see it. Okay. So let's fast forward to the last couple of days. Um, so right now, we're already dealing with multi-platform games was uh going over to playstation right um they they went one for i think one for four i think see if these was the success but all the other ones flopped um but um now we're in a situation where there's these layoffs there's these re yeah. these uh they shut down i think two prominent studios and the thing that bugged me about this whole sh this thing with xbox right is that 
after every acquisition, they would tout how many studios they have. Like, oh, we have 27 yeah. studios, and then the yeah, actors, you're going to have 30 something odd studios, whatever. They would, they would play on those numbers, make it a big deal how many studios you count. And first thing you do, you know, Activision deal closes, you kind of spin off Toys for Bob. They're no longer part of Fold, and I, that's why I went to Activision. It's like, hey, you got Crash Bandicoot Spiral, like you. Like, why get rid of the only thing that can make a person that can make ki- games for kids, right? Or like the younger crowd. You addressed that was a, literally a a audience you can address. You had a developer directly for that. And then now you get rid of Arcane Austin, albeit I understand it's it's not the biggest deal because you have the primary Arcane Leon and whatnot, but it's another person that can make good games. Honor, dishonor. Yeah, like you know what I mean? You have another one in the fold that can like, you know. Arcane, literally, you have two arcanes. You have one arcane this year, the next arcane game next year. You know what I mean? And to keep going. So, and then, and you know, it really bothers me that they were they were going to pitch Dishonored three. Yeah, and they shut them down before they had the opportunity to. And the most heartbreaking one is Tangle. And the thing about Tangle is like, what's been the Xbox Achilles heel for twenty years? Japan. Japan. You literally got yourself a first party studio. Literally, by you literally got a, a Japanese studio. That's literally your foothold. That's your shoe in. I could have thought of many things they could have done with uh, Tango in, in that studio and have them be a liaison for other to communicate for you for stuff like Square Enix, Sega, Capcom, and, and starting to get more Japanese games and stuff. We're struggling. We need to do a better job. We're going to invest. We're going to invest. We're going to invest. And that's the studio you shut down. Tango Gameworks, right? Uh, of this Bethesda deal, because mind you, when they first bought Bethesda, people forget like this. They only produced PlayStation exclusive up until literally, essentially, Starfield, right? Starfield. And because, and, uh, so when Tango, but when, with Tango, they immediately bought uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. And then they followed that up with uh, Hi Fi Rush. And you knew they were going to have, like, maybe an evil within three in the cut. And then Hi-Fi Rush was, uh, uh, I can't say it was a commercial success, but it was a critical success. It warranted oh, a follow-up or, or, or yeah. earned a co follow It warranted. And the thing that didn't make sense about Tango, right? You picked Hi-Fi Rush as one of the games that you were going to sacrifice for multi-platform. Yeah. Like, you. They also, they also shadow dropped it. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. You didn't have any marketing for it. No marketing. Yeah. So it, they definitely got a raw deal. I mean, it it made no sense to me. And the, my biggest beef with Xbox, and I keep repeating it, is that it's with the, the the Activision deal is the curse of everything. I regret. I regret the Activision deal. I'm not so afraid to I. say it. I completely regret it because I did. If you told me that during this Activision deal, once they closed it, that they were going to go first. Uh, third party, essentially, not even they had fuck putting Activision games on PlayStation. Put Xbox Game Studio games on PlayStation. Uh, you're going to close uh, uh four studios, let one walk away, and uh, you're going to port games over to PlayStation Nintendo before bringing a single Call of Duty over to Game Pass. Well, I can tell you one thing. I went to uh, 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 this has been talked about, but I went to uh, um. It was called, uh, uh, it was a dinner in New York City. Phil was there. Um, it was a basically off the record conversation with Xbox. So um, basically, Phil talked about uh, the Activision deal and we, we talked about some of the stuff. And he said they're basically going to have the whole holiday. Of, of Call of Duty. Now, this was before the block and before all of that. So, I think the change, the, I think, I think probably even Phil and, and all the people from Xbox feel the same way. Like, they were better off without a seven, $70 billion acquisition where, you know, uh, there's going to be return on investment. And, you know, somebody said to me today, I was talking to somebody that worked for Xbox for a while, and they said, Xbox, they're not, they're never going to, Xbox was always at a point where 
it really didn't matter. It didn't affect margins. It didn't affect stock. It didn't affect uh, their their you know push to be number one uh, globally with. with so you're very saying a, up until this point, Xbox has never affected their bottom line. Right. So when this started to, that's when the real scrutiny started, and and that was basically the day. It got approved. I mean, they looked at it and, uh, you know, they they saw a lot of things they didn't like. And uh, I think for a long while, Phil was running a mock where he could do things and just Satya would say, okay. And then now the whole deal comes through and, and then, then you have a different guy come, come at Phil and say, what the hell's going on? And this is the thing that... Uh, spurning all these moves it's definitely um coming from amy hood and satya it's definitely there uh, i know for a fact that they are weren't happy with phil and uh one of the things um and i've talked about this in february and it's now coming out but they basically said what are you going to do with call of duty there's no way you're going to put this on game pass and not have a plan and uh, that's why I think that the you know they they basically now it's no more hey you could do what you want you know you know you're a side project you're a side piece now it's you got to stand up on your own feet and that's why this is all happening and that's why this will continue to happen for I would say a, a, a pretty good amount of time where they they have to kind of bring in these margins. I think you'll get a game pass increase. My hope is that, um, and I said this, that I don't have any faith in them, but they do have a showcase. If they showcase and they show game pass in in uh, COD and game pass, that's a big win, I, I would say. I would say that's a really something that you can hang your hat on for an Xbox fan because – it is, you know, it's funny because I, I, you know, I've talked to people that, you know, like journalists and stuff and like some of them are like, well, they're 40,000, they're 40, they're over 40 or 10,000 employees and the game costs way too much. And like, they're justifying Call of Duty not being game, uh, uh, on a game, game pass day one, which to me, you made a promise. Again, you have to uphold the things that you've said. Even even before, even if that's because you mismanaged, because you promised the Starfield thing, and then and you said all of, all of Bethesda games, You if two years later you went against that, and then specifically Starfield, which Sarah Bond uh, touted uh, on... Xbox stage at, uh, at one of the showcases as exclusive, you can't rule that game out when you're talking to Tom Warren. So you lied about that. You misled co- co- consumers about that. And now you have consumers expecting, as of that stupid podcast that they had, and Booty saying, well, you know, uh, the, the everything's in Game Pass day one, where everyone was like cheering for it. You better hold to that promise because if you don't, um, there's going to be really big pushback on that. Uh, they might, they are probably going to raise Game Pass, but if they keep Game Pass and they have day and date, it's worth it because uh, of the sheer amount of first party that if they can get these games to come that are coming. But um, if you keep games like Call of Duty out, that's that's a real big miss. So. I'd say for this showcase, that's going to be like the biggest thing to me personally. You know, I'd be happy if they put it in Game Pass. Day one. Is there anything that, because you weigh up something, I forget about that that podcast business update, uh, where they (laughs) definitively said, like, you know, everything we're launching at Game Pass, day one, Game Pass would only be on Xbox. Um, but then you start hearing rumors that Call of Duty may not go. Um, I, I'm still I'm still disappointed that other than Diablo, there's no other 
I'm going to say this. Yeah. Diablo, I I feel like Diablo was always coming to Game Pass because they had marketing rights. It just wasn't going day one. Um, So, and I'm like, so I don't feel, I don't look at uh, Diablo as a, as a, a positive from the deal. I just feel like it was just going to happen whether the deal closed or not. Um, Because why bring them on the stage? Like, you know what I mean? It was just going to happen whether the deal closed or not. And but there's not a single Crash Bandicoot is still on PlayStation Plus. It's not in Xbox. It's like, what's take? What's what's the deal? Exactly. Um, Microsoft and Xbox, and this is the, the this is why I, I can't stand when their stupid earning calls come in, and you hear about yeah. things selling, um, you know, below expectations or things, uh, yeah. uh, no growth here and there. And you think about how these things are just supposed to work. And I've said this to Attic all the time, and people now and Tim Dog. We followed each other for a long time. I used to go. I always go went on rants on Xbox marketing. I've been going on rants on their marketing for years, and people would like mm-hmm. shut me down and whatnot. And like, you don't know what you talk about, uh, armchair marketing director or something like that. And it's like, bro. But now I look at and everybody's calling out the marketing. It's like, dude, I've been talking about this marketing problem. The issue I have with Xbox is that I like when Xbox was broke in the side piece, like when it was like do whatever you want because. They took some gambles. I just hated that it didn't have the support. You know, like you remember the marketing like Halo Five Guardians had, even yeah. MCC and and get the, the the Titanfall marketing. Oh my! Like it was just like they put like effort. They wanted you to buy their console. They wanted you to buy their uh uh their games. Now the focus being on Game Pass, right? There's here's a, here's an issue I end up having. They'll Put out a, a one they don't market their console, so the, the exposure is low. But they'll have a game that's supposed to be a big deal. They don't market it, right? And they be like, "Well, we're going to rely on Game Pass to do the marketing for us." But the problem is, you don't market Game Pass, so yeah. you're in a situation is you need get, it, the way that it works. It, it, it goes back to literally, literally them. You need to sell an Xbox in order to sell a Game Pass subscription. That's the easiest way to, for you to sell Game Pass because PC, they're hard-headed. They ain't going to go. Right. And Samsung and TVs and stuff, you still kind of have to teach people how to do it. So consoles are the easiest way. That's literally a one-to-one sell. You sell a console, you sell a, a Xbox Game Pass subscription, right? Right. Now, you sell once you sell that Game Pass subscription, you... Uh, sell the games that's in it but because they don't sell the console market or advertise the console the console isn't selling and because the console isn't selling game pass is not being adopted and because game pass is not being adopted the games within game pass are not being played or like it's it's like it's one i don't understand that logic it's like yo out like sell you have to sell the xbox you have to sell it game pass is not going to grow if you don't sell the console you literally need the console to sell the subscription. I know the subscription's everywhere, but it's not widely adopted. The one place where you need it to be widely adopted is the console. And they're not putting that effort or that that push marketing. These dudes want a hundred uh what's it, a hundred million Game Pass subscribers wanted, by twenty thirty. Yeah. If you're gonna you need to sell you need to sell a hundred million consoles. You, yeah, George, I mean, like, you know what I mean? It's like, even if you divide the pile, because don't expect you're going to get 100% conversion rate on a console. But even if you did, you need, you want, the console should be responsible for at least 70% of that 100 million. And to get there, you have to sell a lot of consoles. And they're, they're like, they think they're just going to get these subscribers out of thin air. And that and that's what bugs me about it. You know what it is? I, 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 I kind of follow the timeline. <clears throat> Game Pass hit a wall, I think, really way too early. Meaning they hit a ceiling with console uh, way too early. And then then they were saying, hey, well, we got this whole other PC side. And then PC hit a ceiling. And it's like in, in the cell phone world. It's like what happens is, is that Anytime you start something like a, uh, like 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 that, like a service, uh, and, and you're having a 
a device attached to it or something like that, you're always going to get growth within the first couple of years. You're going to get strong growth. But there's always going to be that time when you hit the ceiling and then you have to be creative. They hit that ceiling, I think, even right after the pandemic, I feel like. Um, And the pandemic was probably the worst thing for Xbox, too, because it gave them a full sense of security that people really uh, were buying, you know, uh, Xboxes at that at that point. I think what got really scary is is that Game Pass hit that ceiling way too early, and then the hardware. Uh, we talked about the entry points, or we, we well, they talked about it. The hardware took a drop, so it's like it's like a, a combination of all these bad things happening at once. The Activision thing going on for so long. Um, the Activision thing, even in a way, kind of cueing in Satya, who's absolutely clueless about gaming, uh, into gaming, and and kind of putting more of a focus on Xbox. It's like it's been a perfect storm for Xbox, and uh, uh, in a bad way. And they're really in a, in a spot right now where um, the thing that I don't like. Is is that they they don't take it head on. They don't really talk about it. Uh, Phil um, doesn't like to face conflict, in my opinion. He doesn't want to. He he'd rather you know be friends with some somebody than beat them, in my opinion. Like in the in the in in the in the console, the competitive world of selling consoles. But um, there's major problems here. You know, the, the, there's major problems. And, you know, what gets me is, is that, like, they're so afraid to do something like put ads on Game Pass in other countries uh, and have, like, a, an ad tier because of public reaction or what people think. But they have, they won't do that, but they'll let something like this go on since February. It's like... You're afraid to walk forward on on, cer- on certain things because you're so afraid that people won't like it. But people aren't liking what you're doing right now, and you won't address it. So, listen, I don't. There, there is the, there is a spot for me in Xbox right now in my heart. I love the community. There's people like yourself, great content creators, great people, great gamers, fantastically talented. Uh, you know, I just want them to get their shit together, but I don't know how the hell they're going to do it. I, I think that the hole is so big that, you know, it's it's at least taken a, a couple of years to, for them to get this straight. And that might be some games canceled. You know, I mean, like, what the hell is going on with Perfect Dark? We bought these studios in 2018. They, they're getting seven years to make a game. I mean... And they're not even like it's like they might not even be finished when they come out. So I don't know really. I don't know uh, what's going on that side. I think that Matt Booty, uh, he, I think there should there should be some changes. It might not have to be Phil, but there should be some. They have to start to 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 at least acknowledge what the hell's going on here. In my opinion. Yeah, I think they need some dogs. <clears throat> they need some real dogs. They need the bad guys. The bad guys yeah. they need are the people that I, I, I don't care. But I honestly, when I, I felt like when they got Activision, is and I really feel like they should have kept their heads. The responsible, you're, the people that was running Zenimax, you're responsible. You just work for us. Activision, people that's running, like, right. I feel like uh, uh, y- Yabara, all of them should have just, just did it. Just that they were just a chain of those commands, right? And then you have the Xbox people at like the top, right? That's all. But them like being in, like truly integrating that way, and you know the the current team don't have, they struggled managing the stuff they have now, and they got all these studios. But they need some dogs. They do need some some of the people that was at Ubisoft, some of the people that was at EA, some of the people that was at Take Two, who you know who don't care. And the thing is, 
the one thing I guess I, I like, I, I could respect from PlayStation and Nintendo now, and only now. We, you, you know how we were so Maybe happy. The competitive aspect in, in their leadership. I feel like everyone's too kumbaya, yeah. not enough competitiveness. Yeah. The thing is, is that PlayStation and Nintendo, they don't talk. They don't interact online. And we used to make fun of them for that, right? Because we got to interact with, like, you know, the Phil Spencers, the Aaron Greenbergs, yeah, and the Sarah yeah. Bond, stuff like that. And that worked to PlayStation benefit. So when things happen, is is it like who are you going to contact? Who are you going to tag on Twitter? Exactly. No one. It's just like whatever. Whereas they they keep things they're personable, and they they have they, they they speak on like everything. They speak in absolutes, and they're always going back and have to correct what they say. It's like man, you guys should just don't say anything at all. Yeah. Um, my biggest thing about Xbox that I can't stand is that we all wanted we were why were we excited for the Zenimax deal, the exclusive? Wow, we're bringing yeah. Fallout and Elder Scrolls under the Xbox umbrella. It's 2006 all over again. You know what I mean? It's it's like but like permanently. Um, and then Activision, it's like yo, like this is crazy. Um, they literally, I felt like they literally. Gave up before they can use uh um before they gave a shot they yeah really before yeah before they can what's, what's this the dude that snaps his finger with the freaking infinity ring or whatever uh what's his uh, name uh, Thanos no. Thanos stuff. before like my thing is give yourself at least a year two years to like just see that what you could actually too. do like see what you can that actually do too. man like give Call of Duty to get, get put it in Game Pass one. Holiday, see what what would happen. Yeah, that, that was short circuited, and it was short circuited because of financial reasons. And Satya, um, people want people to blame. Mm. I think if Phil really had his druthers, he would give us everything that we wanted. But the reality is, is that the books have to. You have to make money. Yeah, so and I look. We, we're not making money. I said this in my uh, video that went. Um, live an um, hour ago, I said Microsoft is essentially just a, a bank to Xbox, and, 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 and they give Xbox loans to this, and, it's up to, and yeah. Xbox has to pay it back. Before, the, you know, a couple millions here to do to release a console yeah. and all this other stuff wasn't a big deal. It's like, so they even probably, they even let Zenimax slide. All right, seven billion, you know. Yeah. But when yeah. it becomes your biggest purchase, yes, it's like, I, 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 I wish Satya and Amy Hood would have just said no. But my thing is, when they made the presentation, they look into the numbers. How did they not see any of this and talk about this before going through with the product? I think I, if they would have just said no, maybe Phil Spencer would have moved on to something smaller like a Square Enix of Capcom that's like $4 billion and, wow. and, and, and would have been fine. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like, you would have been fine. We would just, it, it, you, you still operating as Xbox, whatever. You'll have a couple flops here and there or whatever, but it wouldn't have been this drastic. The eyes wouldn't be on you. Um, it's just like, damn, only if I can rewind that. Like, ah, you should ignore that one. Go go for like Square Enix or Ubisoft all, or some shit like that. We're freaking pushing for it. It's yeah. just, it's crazy. If, if 70, listen, with 70 billion. They could, they could, have, they could have done a lot better. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the mobile side, the Call, Call of Duty is down what seventy percent. Mm. Um, the the mobile side. I mean, it's like today they they announce a store, but they will say it's only mobile web base, web, web base. Yeah, right? web base. It's like if you're gonna do something like that, can we get it? Maybe not in piecemeal. Like, let's just get a fucking app on your phone says xbox has achievements connected to it and just is like ready to go instead of fucking promising us way too early and going through shit web browser that nobody wants to go through nobody's gonna go through yeah um you know people want apps they want go to the iphone store uh, go to your android xbox should be an xbox right there you go to it you can purchase this game for console Purchase the scheme, play right now. It should be all there. And it's not, it's, I'm this tell- is not, it's not hard to do, but in their sense, it's hard for them. That's what gets me. You know, so already, it's like pisses me off. You know, it's so crazy. If people hate me every time I say this, I'm a, I'm an Xbox fan. I'm not a Microsoft fan. But for Xbox, for what Microsoft wants and what Xbox wants to really do, 
there's only one rightful partner they need to for the Xbox to do what they want to do, and that's Apple. If Apple uh, owned uh, Xbox, there would be a native Xbox app you, on the app. You, you don't understand. <laughs> like something like that could really change Xbox. You, you, we talk about that's a perfect example. If they had the the the, the people at Apple, you would have a fucking app. Like I'm just a, think about how cool that would be. You you t- take your phone on. You have an Xbox as a cool icon. You hit it like everything else you do on iPhone, and then you go to it. You can play the game right there. You could fucking uh, you could buy the game for your console. It could be cr- everything would be into you know. It'd be just set up. Whereas you have with Xbox, what they're doing, they're fucking putting it on a web browser. How easy is that? It's like there's nothing exciting about that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think that uh, that was their problem with Windows Phone. You Isn't that I mean? the problem with the Game Pass uh, streaming now? Because it's still web based. You have to, you have to go to the website and then save it as a icon right. on well, the home page. Supposed, yeah. They're supposedly fixing that, but yeah. you know, I mean, so, I don't know. I just think that the, the stuff like that, like it, you should be able to play Candy Crush and get achievements. And um, it should be a whole ecosystem. It's not that hard to do. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know what type of support they're going to have. Is Candy Crush uh, enabled with achievements now on the Windows Store? Is that? I don't know. It should be. Let me see. Uh... So let me ask you a question, uh, Tim Dog. Yeah. What do you think there's anything they can do to, to fix this at this point? Like the, well, I think question, what's gonna what? ha- I think I think what's gonna happen is is that they have to settle the books. Settling the books is gonna come with a lot of pain. Um, I, I don't know if certain games might get canceled. Um, studio closures. Well, studios what would they close better. next though? My thing is, there's not. I mean, like, like State of Decay three. <laughs> like honestly. Like what's going on there, or or the initiative because they're apparently or initiative like no. Cl- I will on only there? tell them to close the initiative if they get. I, I know I, this is the last thing I should be doing is asking for acquisition, but they got to somehow get Crystal Dynamics. Right, <laughs> but I don't even. I, I don't think that they're in any kind of position. Mode. Yeah, they yeah. They they have to settle the books, and then they have to. Um, you gave a perfect example, uh, kid. You said. Like, get the app and, and have something like Apple would do it. Like, kind of do stuff that's going to reinvent yourself. Um, with the console, I mean, let's see what the, she, the, you know, the, she touted this, this, this theoretical power thing. Um, if they come out with another console, if, and I don't think that's that's looking good right now, but if they do... That could be a, a hail mary for them, because uh, that's a new start. Um, My bad. Uh, Game you want... Pass, Game Pass. I don't. I, to be honest, I think that it really does condition certain people not to buy games, mm-hmm. and that's the last position that they they can be in right now. So, you, you want know. my honest opinion? I think they desperately want to gut game pass but they know they can't i think if they were able to gut game pass and go back to the a la carte buying games they would but they know that that is simply not an option because i feel like the only what, way having what about, all... what about making it 29.99 which listen like i said i, I think it, it can hold its weight if they have the content that they have on but 29.99 would be uh, something that uh, people scoff at, but to be honest, if you, if you, if they're putting out the games that they're supposed to, they can get a, get away with that, and that would help them on the fact that uh, when these big budget games come out, they're in a deep hole every time these uh, games come out because they lose money. Do, you, do have, you, you have twenty nine ninety nine? That's I, I think I said doubling a couple real, of years real quick, ago. Smooth, real go ahead, quick. my bad. Go ahead. Do, do you do you think that that I'm onto something a little bit when it comes to that? Because I do feel yeah. like 
Game Pass they is don't. Right they now. regret going so hard in Game Pass. Because here's the thing: there's been so many things that's happened throughout the years. Remember at the beginning, Game Pass used to be like the butt of every marketing push of everything. Like everything's in Game Pass. Every yeah. every game in this showcase is in Game Pass. Sometimes yeah. they don't even tell you if a game's in Game Pass till after the showcase on Twitter. <laughs> so so to me they regret coming out with game pass now i feel they like regret the day and date with the heavy that's what game. i meant yeah if they could go back and stop them from putting games in day and date i do feel like they would if they knew they wouldn't of get course. crucified for it i'm i would put money that they would do it because i think that's the biggest issue so what's your what's your other answer in my opinion is to, to raise it to raise the price I mean, people will go crazy, but I don't listen. I'm gonna be honest. I think Xbox has a lot of quality to it. When when you say like when you talk about Game Pass, Game Pass is a tremendous deal, but it's way underpriced at, at seventeen bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, in my definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so just raise the fucking price. And I I think the only get other self situated there because you can't have something where it's running and it's and you're losing money. I don't think that that's an option. I don't think they're going to go that far. Um, $24.99? No, see, here's the thing. You can raise it to $30. Is it truly going uh, to get to the point where they feel like they're actually making a uh, profit? Because they, well, they've been very... Would, would, would help them a lot. A lot. The, yeah. But, but mm-hmm. the thing is, is they've been very vocal that they, they're not just missing targets. They're, they're, they're nowhere coming close to what they thought they would be. Yeah. yeah, but so, that's, part, that's to me, partially their fault, though, because they're not, they're not, it is, they mismanage themselves. It, it, it is, but at, at the same time, I think if they're not going to pull the rug from the day and dates, which we know they're not going to at this point, because they already chose. What about making it 60 days? I'm okay, hold on. Uh, okay, uh, so this is what they could do. Now, they can, multi, uh, they, they can go multi plat entirely with the console. Yeah, they are uh, the but, but, but hear me out. Don't do the day and date. Just be up front in a year. The games go everywhere else, including PC. Because my thing is to save the console. That's what my thing is. Right. And I feel like if you put games like, like Starfield, Fable, you know, not Call of Duty, obviously, but that Call of Duty would be in Game Pass day and date with this scenario. And you're like, look... If you want to play these games, and, and that's another thing, they got to be aggressive. You know, we're not going to make Call of Duty exclusive, but we're going to make that Black Ops, uh, that Black Ops collector's version, like the Halo one, and that's us. Or, or they get some like exclusive stuff on it. The problem is, is Microsoft 100%. has the problem is Microsoft has all the tools, but they don't want to look like villains on social media. Well, they're looking like villains right now, and they're looking the worse than villains. It, so incompetent. So I feel like if you look at all these games and they're exclusive on the Xbox brand for a year, then they go everywhere else. I do feel like that would start to to bounce the the console back a little bit. Now it's going to matter on the games because if the games are shit, no one's waiting a year. No one gives a fuck. But if the games are good. You get that new Fallout, the new Elder Scrolls, and you know for a fact, 100% fact, these games are not going anywhere for at least a year, and you have to buy an Xbox for those games if you want to play those games, or you can wait a year, more people would buy an Xbox because we, we're, we're seeing it now with the, con- with the console and PC market. There is so many people that had a P- uh, an Xbox that only play on PC, and they don't own an Xbox. But they right. owned one last generation. Why oh, did they buy one last? You, you're saying keep PC out of it too? And like, no, everything yeah. out of it. Just Xbox for a oh, year. Oh, okay. That's not that, Just yeah. Xbox that, for a that, year. That would, that would be Repeat, I missed that. What'd you say? So I'm That's saying not a bad idea. what I would do is, okay, we're going full multiplayer. Be very transparent. Everything's going to PlayStation. Everything's going to switch what it can handle. But we're not doing day and date with PC anymore, and everything is exclusive to Xbox as a timed exclusive for a year. And then after the year, 
And you can even, uh, you know, that's if you want, one of the best ideas I've heard pitched. Ever, it, 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 if you want, if they went this direction, they could even go the Game Pass route too. It's like in six months they'll be in Game Pass dang day. Now that would really truly fix their shit. If they were, if they had the balls to go on Twitter saying PC people who ain't getting our games day and day, and yeah. our games aren't going into PC for six months. Um, as a as a as a fanboy, I would love that, but that actually even does it's that not actually, realistic. That's it's a deterrent realistic. for me because the thing it's is, is that realistic. it now I've completely bought in, right? Uh, I have PC, I have Rogue Ally, and I have um, Xbox console. I play my games on all those devices, like that I buy, like the games that I buy and play them, like. And I, I feel you on that, but here's the thing. People who's going to sit there and they're going to tell me with a straight face. They tell me with a straight face that this isn't going to affect the Xbox brand, like the console. You are delusional. Yeah, You're senile. Yeah. No, I, the time, the end of this generation, they probably won't even sell a million every quarter. I, By the time always... next gen starts, they would be lucky to sell 10 million their first year. Lucky. I think... What they, what can? Because the thing is, one of the three things has to happen, right? You either have to a, just close Game Pass down, or b, raise the price significantly, or, um, or the, go back on the first party thing. The, and the thing is, is it's not the price that's the issue; it's the amount of people adopting the subscription service. Yeah, but the thing you is, to me, to, the thing is, is, the higher you raise that top part, the 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 less the ceiling gets down because people start on subbing. The problem is this content, mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, but if putting... you have if you have if you start actually pushing out these games like Indiana Jones and stuff like that, yeah. 39, 30 bucks is not going to be something that's going to deter. Yeah, I was saying, I, but, but I, I agree. Uh, I agree that you, you or well, you're trying to fix. We're all trying in our in our heads trying to I, fix the problem that Xbox has. <laughs> but one of the things that I think that you said that I want to see from Xbox that I doubt we'll see. I want to see them incentivize... Incentivize. Exactly, thank you. Um, the console. Yeah, because oh. right now they pretty much tell you, play this... It, you are better off playing Xbox games anywhere else but on Xbox. They run better. The, for the most part, they, they, they perform better on all sides. You know, you, you actually have a healthier install base. Yeah, I, it's it, it is it is what it is. You know, I, it's, I, it's a good point. I, I recommended this, um, and I, I went over it in the video I did. I also tweeted what I think something I could tolerate because I, I meant to ask you, uh, uh, Tim Dog, but I know you already moved to PlayStation, and I know you have adopted you no know, Game Pass, but you would buy an Xbox game regardless back then. Um, my thing is, there. I feel like a compromise uh, needs to happen, uh, a compromise that benefits um, both um, Xbox and the the the, 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 the ecosystem, uh, the yeah. the games and the subscription. And the where I'm at about it is like, okay, let's say, because there's a couple things that can happen, right? I think you this year, you if you really need to prove that. Game Pass could be something. This year's Call of Duty's the, has to launch in it. You that's the only test run. There's no other game bigger. That's why I say that. That's why it's so big this June. To see if they announce it. If and they that, don't, then it's it's going to be. Made. I personally believe they're going to let the ship go down. I I, I personally think that the money know. people. I think the money people at Microsoft no longer believe in Xbox. I think they they see. The games and the studios they own, and they see value in that. But the Xbox ecosystem, I personally don't see, especially the console. I think they've already gave up on the console. They're going to let that sucker go out there and roast to death. Because the thing is, is you do nothing but consistently tell people to go to every other place to play your games, but your own damn games. I think that's and, the, the. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. And at the end of the day. People on the uh, on Twitter, people on YouTube can tell tell me till they blue face that they're not going to drop support or they're not go they're always going to be an Xbox console. You're delusional because when that time comes and it will come, where they're not making money. Because here's the thing: I think as long as the console breaks even, they'll let it rock. Okay, you paying for yourself. You can sit here. That's fine. You can be in the basement. That's cool. We don't need to see you. You better just make what you put in. 
make what you what what what, what we spend on you. But the moment that Xbox goes down and they're spending money to keep Xbox around, that's where they all be like, do we really need this? Because if there's no console and there's no Xbox, we could probably talk to to, to PlayStation about putting Game Pass on PlayStation. Well, that's, we could probably. Huh? They said they won't do that. They're, they're, they won't do that because of a console. I guarantee you, if Xbox, the console was shut down, PlayStation would be more open to it. Yeah, listen, I think that uh, moving forward, they're, 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 I really, what I believe um, their mindset right now is, uh, especially the, the bean counters, they want to be a lean, triple A third party where they don't bet on many smaller games basically they're they're going to be betting on indiana jones fallout uh blade maybe the flash you know they're gonna be taking big it's the kind fuck of the flash come from well just like I, that, that's, <laughs> yes. that's nothing but my point is is like it's gonna take a high leverage ip yeah and they're gonna take it, and they're gonna, and then flat. That don't think that's a rumor. That's I'm just taking that out of, out of anywhere. But Yo, I'm gonna be real uh, with you, Tim. I ain't never heard no one say flash that? exclusive. Well, well, whatever, but like you know, or, or Tim over the sweat. What did I just do? Black, <laughs> Black Panther, whatever. They're gonna take a big, high leveraged IP that they know is safe, and they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna basically. Uh, make that game with the studios, the big studios that they have, which they can do, and it is kind of a safe bet. But what gets lost in translation is um, the console, because mm. I don't think that the, 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 that's going to be a focus. That console's done. It's done. No, nah, I mean, like, I don't know. I, 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 I'm only like 40% by 2030. Xbox is the, the consoles no do you longer. Think they'll, do you think they'll announce a digital console? Anymore? I think they're out, they are going to go next gen, but I do think if yeah. they don't improve the perception and the sales of Xbox between now and then, <laughs> they'll get to a point in next gen where they're like, look, we tried, let's pull the plug. Listen, like, we're at that point. We're at that point. Yeah. So you, you, you do yeah. think that they're having those conversations now? Yes. Yeah. Are, are you sure or are you just speculating uh speculating but i do talk to people um there's a lot of things going on at microsoft right now internally Wait, i'll tell you what i heard i don't give a fuck if, if we're recording i heard that they still they're leaning towards going multi-plat but there's still friction doing it because apparently they weren't happy with the initial sales of these four games and they're still and and they're still wondering if it's the right move. It, it, apparently, the right people are going the the to go multi plat though. Uh, I want to ask you, Tim, what side do you think Phil and, and Matt Booty and Sarah's on? Do you think their team go multi plat or team? You know, we need go, exclusives because I'm. So you think all of them are are with it? Yeah, the, they they when they had that conversation. Listen, when they talked about screens and how you could play your PlayStation and it'd be Xbox. That was all I needed to know. That, that was I, so enough. But I, um, I just think it just, listen, if you put Sea of Thieves on and it's a success, yeah, it's obvious that if they put Halo, if they put Forza, if they put Forza Horizon specifically. Yeah, Horizon uh, would kill on yeah, that system. Yeah, those games, those games are going to sell. They know this. <laughs> so that that's something that's going to happen right now from what i heard is is that the plan is that the, they will give it a year exclusivity and then after the year they will look into porting that game to see if it's feasible so that's where they stand um i think that i think this time be, next year starfield will be on playstation right like i think that they're going to start to accelerate it next year and i think then like then like certain releases like blade and elder scroll six and anything new that they add uh they will um you know be uh day and date see um, see and that's where all right i'm gonna tackle these one things and then i'm gonna let you know everybody go right um 
My thing is what I a compromise I would take for Xbox if I feel like your marquee AAA games, Halo, Gears, Fable, Forza, Elder Scrolls, Call of Duty, don't have to launch in Game Pass day one. You put them in six uh, sixty days to ninety days later, but you increase the discount you give us on those games twenty percent. Make a make a five hour trial available for those games day one. And your unproven games or your games as a service, like your State of K threes, your South of Midnight, those go day and date in Game Pass um, because you don't like. I feel like. Oh, did you? Did you guys see? Apparently, Tom Warner just posted a a video of Sarah Bond talking about the uh, layoffs. I I, I can I can play it um, so that we all can hear it. Um, All right, it's bad. I listened to it. It's bad. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see. Let, Let me have know if a you hear. Can you... It's ahead. a little bit off, but because I love the PlayStation controller, and, and one of the things you asked me earlier mm-hmm. was why. I, I honestly, I'm going to tell you the truth. The controller really impressed me. Do you think that Xbox is going to go ahead with this? Uh, um... What this controller? Yeah, we got the same yeah, one. It's... Yeah, it's not... yeah I, the Dual Sense is definitely the best PlayStation Wait, controller what they've is ever the made. One that's more expensive. All is that, that worth... edge, the edge, the DualSense edge. Is that worth it? <coughs> no. I'll buy it tomorrow. It's not worth it? I don't personally think, but if you rock with the Elite and, you, and you're doing it big, go ahead. Me personally, I don't think the controller's, uh, I, don't th- I don't even think the Elite is worth it, but I don't I, I just, no, I'm just saying, because no, I, the, the, the freaking, um, the DualSense, I love the, the, the vibrations, and, and the, I really so, am impressed. Let, why? But I wanted to ask you guys before we play this. Do you think that they're going to announce a digital console with the new controller this E3? I uh, yes, maybe. I think so. I don't know. Either that or the handheld. They need to. Uh, they need to announce something. They need to get some. Uh, some uh, spark. They some need life to show into some fucking consoles. games. That's what they need to show. <laughs> they always show the games. hardware because I don't believe in the hardware anymore. I need to see some fucking games. Okay. Guys, I'll be right back. One second. I'm going to just be two seconds. Yeah, the only while he the other thing because you said like for them to go day and day on PlayStation stuff, then then they need to keep uh, the games in Game Pass day one, and they need a reason to keep Xbox around. Like that's the only thing is like all right, you, if you go there, all right, but you got to find value, and I think they need to come still come out with consoles because you can't the the, the best place to play your game shouldn't be on a no PlayStation. It should either be well, on the Xbox or Every, on a PC. Everyone's tweeting about her her interview right now. Yeah, I'm about to. I got it on here now. I I've, I've been meaning to uh, to watch it, uh, but I do have it. I'm gonna uh, wait till he come back so before let, I play it. When Tim gets back, I gotta I gotta I gotta want to tell him my my Game Pass conspiracy first, okay? Mm-hmm. And then we'll go to watch that. How do you want to do that? You want to share your screen and we watch it on here? Or? No, I was just gonna. Play. You, okay. you guys are gonna be able to oh, hear. Oh yeah, it that's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. I'm back. I'll listen to All you. All right, R- real quick, Ten Dog, before we play this. <laughs> okay, I put the state of Xbox a lot on um, leadership, a lot on studios not doing what they're supposed to, like three, four, three, and I do put some of it on Game Pass because I feel like Game Pass put put the company, and maybe maybe you can clarify on this or not. I feel like ever since Game Pass showed up, marketing's been worse because they feel like all they have to do is market Game Pass, and that's all. They don't have to market anything else. I feel like they they stopped going after marketing deals as much because part of the marketing deals was Game Pass, and that cost more money, so they didn't do that. They stopped going after Time Exclusive, same thing. Cost more money, they couldn't do that. And these are the things that's going to bring value to your console. And I feel like Game Pass has offset all of that, which has led to where the console is now. Yeah. I think I think a lot of it is uh, marketing, too. They cut marketing in Europe in 2017. They cut that FIFA deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and people in Europe say you can't even you can't even fly an Xbox where it was at a pretty it was at a pretty decent spot mm-hmm. um, last generation. It is now non-existent. So, yeah, the, the lack of marketing, and that was marketing cuts, and that all came in, like, 2016, 2017. Uh, I remember being told that, you know, uh, if we can make a little bit of money with the company, I'm okay with that. You know, like, stupid uh, rationale for, you know, the lack of marketing. But 
Um, I don't blame like Aaron or anything. I just think that this is yeah. I think I think lack. Aaron does his job fine, but when no, you don't have the mark, you don't have the money. Yeah, you don't have the money. You don't have the money. Like yeah. and, and and you know that goes into right now. Hellblade two comes out on the twenty fucking third or the twenty first. They literally, they literally and it just started the marketing yesterday. They, they literally <laughs> backed part of their marketing was guys like Kid Cult. Mm-hmm. Dealer, yourself. and they don't even pay them. They don't even pay them. Like you know what I mean. But that was part of their like, hey, don't worry, these guys will pick up the slack. Yeah, the grassroots that marketing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, what well, it is, what it is. They they need it. You need you need freaking marketing in a movie theater when you start a movie and you have like, you know, uh, Hellblade. It's it, it's a big deal in my opinion, and they lost sight of that a long time ago. So at the Game Pass. Think definitely pays but it's just uh just making you know bad decisions after bad decisions and so trying to trying to fix things that, that is, they didn't fix before or is the, just, they're a mess is them rebranding the microsoft gaming accurate have you heard anything about that i don't think they're they're, That's they're stupid. Yeah, doing yeah. doing that no i just okay. think that basically uh um it was just I, I honestly I think that there was a time where just like like in, the, in February it was really hard on on Xbox and Phil because they were like what like like to the point where Safia I think felt like like you know duped in a way because it was that bad so this is all part of the fallout and we will see more fallout from this but I am dying to hear with yeah. you're saying it's bad i I, uh, I got a clip of it this must be the important part of it but is it bad i haven't seen it yet. listen it listen, first time I watch. It, 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 listen it doesn't answer shit <laughs> one of the things that was most upsetting both to xbox gamers and to employees is that you know one of the shuttered studios in particular just created a hit game did really well on game pass and in terms of engagement and won a ton of awards I, shouldn't succeeding in that way ensure the future of, of a studio? You know, one of the things I really love about the games industry is it's a creative art form. And it means that the situation and what success is for each game and studio is also really unique. Like, there's no one-size-fits-all to it for us. Um, and so we look at each studio, each game team, and we look at a whole variety of factors when we're faced with sort of making decisions and and trade-offs like that. Uh, But it all comes back to our long-term commitment to the games we create, the devices we build, the services, and ensuring that we're setting ourselves up to be able to deliver on those promises. She didn't answer the question. (laughs) She didn't answer the question. What the fuck? Oh my goodness! It's infuriating. Did you did, that's real quick? Stup- that's like. It, it, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and finish your statement because mine's going to derail the conversation. Uh, it's just, it's just, just I don't know. That's just uh, I, when she was speaking, I was waiting for her to make a point, and the point really never came. It sounded like a fucking marketing pitch of like they always, the games that we play on the devices that we do with the people that we want, dude. You just fucking laid off a bunch of studios. Have a little better cooth in my, you know, like answer the fucking question or don't even answer it. Yeah, I agree. You you shouldn't. First off, they shouldn't be taking interviews right now. They shouldn't because they, they there's nothing they could say that's gonna uh, like, especially coming out saying some shit like that. Now, is the so, comments on Tom's thing bad? Or are they like, oh, what the fuck? Is... Yeah, they, they, no, nah, they're more so. There's like they sending out uh, sending out a black woman on the front lines. Matt Booty should be answering those questions. So um, no, <laughs> no, Phil Spencer should be answering those fucking questions. You know, it, hey, um, right. did, did you guys see that someone nuked Phil Spencer's Paul at seventy six? Yeah, I I respect it because yeah, that's you took it to the streets in the gaming streets and you found that dude. <laughs> I've known Phil. He probably thought that was funny. <laughs> you, know, you gotta laugh at that, you know. I, it, it really <laughs> nuked this shit. I see him playing 76 all the time. He's been doing that for a minute. I don't think he was happy with that. 
Because yeah. like those survival games are very time consuming. And when that dude either was there, I would have loved a video of him like reacting to it. That would have been funny. How, how hard is it to, to do? Is it? Well, it takes a while. Like to he do... probably lost hours and hours of, of but work. But I'm saying, like, why if they have that option in the game, why doesn't anybody just nuke anybody? Is it very difficult to nuke oh, somebody? Yeah, hold on. How hard is it to nuke people in Fallout 76? That's a. Uh... Okay, how long? Maybe that's somebody yeah. wasted their work. And maybe is it hard to get a nuke, maybe to build one? And they just used it on Phil Spencer. Yeah, we got somebody who really Okay, uh, okay. So it is hard to launch. Is it hard to launch a Fallout, uh, a nuke in Fallout 7? Again, there are plenty of videos about launching a nuke without the codes from, uh, from Nuka Crypt. It's long and a hard process. But if you love puzzles and you tried it from one or the other, the. Uh, then you, you, it should be a lot easier. So someone literally found him, unless they were part of the server from the start, went and found the codes and launched that nuke on his base. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and when you see it on the map, it's like this big. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Um, but Tim Dog, man, my thing is, and I know... Again, this is my, my last question to you in, in regards to this. Uh, enjoy the PlayStation. Um, it, it, it's, it's a good console. I just, I just, I'm just not in love with that. I play it when their game, uh, the games come. But my thing is, what does Xbox need to do? What should Xbox uh, do? And what do you think they'll do to come? Maybe not make. I want them to make it right for. Uh, somehow, there, is there a light yeah. at the end of, end of the tunnel for me as a uh, Xbox fan? Listen, I think I, I I listen to you guys and 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 I even listen to myself sometimes at times when when I, when I was really hardcore. We don't deserve to be getting what's been pushed out to us. We've been buying their consoles, we've been bought, backing them. We've been fighting the the front lines or whatever you want to say on Twitter. Um, I don't know, man. I think it's going to be a long process. I think it's going to be a, a tough, a, a real tough time. But if they can come out and somehow uh, get hardware out and um, it be refreshing and something new and innovative – and surprise us. I, I kind of think that there's that's the only way for them to get back in the ball game. And supposedly it's been green lit, so we have that to look forward to. Um, but uh, it's I'm gonna be completely frank with you guys. It's pretty dire times right now. Um, I think the, the, the next the next six months, uh, you'll get a real kind of feel. I think the question is is that you'll 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 get you'll know you'll know where you're at at the end of this year if there's hope you think you'll have it because they do have games coming out this year i do think indiana jones is going to do well i think hellblade will be highly critical a highly critic score it's probably not going to be the most popular game it's not going to sell gangbusters um uh avowed i would just delay i heard that it was in a bad state last year it's much better now but you know i'm not hearing like stuff like it's going to be a, a big time game forza horizon if they can get that game out this year or next year they do have a lot of games there's not a, a ton as far as everything um i think that they they do have to do right by the xbox gamer and Let's just let's I guess just uh hope. But if I'm gonna be honest and betting man, I, I think they're 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 in a real bad situation that that they might not be able to get themselves out of and or anybody else. I'll give you this much. I know there's a prominent Xbox guy that was his, uh he talked to somebody that they were telling me the story and they were like Xbox is far gone. I think a, a huge problem, uh, kid, is Europe. They should have never. They really lost everything in Europe, and that kind of, you know, handicaps them when they 
It started with that FIFA. They should never have let that they, go. They, they should have never. They they should have never blown that. They should, you know, they should have never. FIFA is so big in Europe, and they fucked up they, letting that go. You know, they should have never. They they need to get marketing back. So, you, you know uh, what would be so effective, Tim? If they made a deal with EA, where they marketed all their games, uh, but they'd have to do that before, and then you had like bundles. Where okay, you buy uh, different bundles for every EA uh, like sports right. game, like a FIFA bundle for a Series S, like a, a Madden bundle, like, and they just had that every maybe, year. Maybe maybe yeah. Game Pass ruined that too in EA Access, and they figure, well, we got the game on EA Play, and they, these games are gonna go to Game Pass every year after you know sometime after lunch. We don't need the marketing rights, and that probably backfired. Wow. Yeah, I listen. Uh, maybe like you said, I think kid, you explained it or do the six months. Uh, I think that's a, a way to kind of help them. They have to make, they have to do some wholesale changes and those changes have to, you know, uh, you know, start to, to really, you know, they, they have to start to get some W's under themselves. I do think this June, June showcase is huge for them. It's going to um, show us really what direction and how you know, hard they're going. You know, yeah, I think that uh, that could be a little bit of a, 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 Do, a, a, a help to them. I, Tower, I was a uh, Towerborn. The games that they have this year. Tower I played Born, Towerborn. It's good, right? I can't talk about it, but I played it. We say thumbs up, thumbs down. And you can, yeah, I don't even want to go that far. <laughs> the, the, the embargo, the NDA that I signed for that game is crazy. Well, I I hope that game's good. Um, mm. They have a lot of games coming, so I just don't that's like the one thing. The fact that they have a lot of games coming, but I feel like it's classic Xbox fall holiday. Like, I, what's what's up for that midpoint? I mean, I know we got Hellblade, but after Hellblade, it's a long wait for the fall and holiday. It's gonna be cold weather again before we start playing decent games. Well, what do they got? Avowed probably gonna get delayed. Um, Indiana Jones. They, Tom Warren said that's Indiana- December. Yeah, oh, jeez. But that's going to be good, though. Um, I do think that that's going to do... do you know, the crazy thing is the most game I'm looking most forward to, believe it or not, is Avowed. And you keep, <laughs> I keep getting... Me, like, I, I I, don't know why. Just I, looking, just, I, I like the way it looks. You, uh, me too. I know, uh, I even know it looks... Uh, but I've heard that... I heard from a really good source. Last year, it was really bad state. Mm-hmm. This year... It's in a much better state, but it's still like a game that's gonna be like a seventy-five. You know, it's Damn. not gonna be something. Yeah, I gotta, it's I not gotta, gonna be something that's gonna be, uh, you know, it's not gonna be a Horizon or something like. Uh, that. Obsidian gonna, doesn't make games below eighty, bro. Like, like yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, all right. So, what do you think it's gonna I, get? I, he says seventy. No, I I heard that that's like my my question. I said, well. Do you think it's like a ninety game? Like no. Do you think it's what a vow? Yeah, yeah. Somebody oh, who God, knows somebody. Man. They said now nah, it's probably gonna be like around seventy five. And like I said, the source is rock solid. So mm-hmm. like it's something. What, what do you think know. Hellblade's gonna get? Eighty seven, eighty six, maybe higher. I think the graphics uh, itself should. If people are being honest about it, they should give it a, a little bit of a bump. I mean, the game is is, is going to be fantastic looking, yeah. and I think the first one was good. So I, you know, yeah. So then you got Towerborn, you got a couple of other games, but uh, the, again, uh, the showcase is 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 going to be uh, a real keep your eyes open. If there is going to be a spark uh, to, to to get them back on track, uh, you'll see it there for sure. Fair enough. Are you going? I'm not. No, I'm not. Going. I think I think uh, some of the guys, ILP are going though, right? Two of them, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. King, King and Cog are going. Yeah. Uh, Tim, you going? No, no. <laughs> but I wouldn't have went even even if I was uh, back the way to old the Tim dog. Because my uh, daughter, uh, she's graduating, and I have a whole bunch of shit with college. I gotta do. I gotta go up there. Yeah. Just June's not gonna be a, a good month. No, fair enough, Mel. Uh, thanks a lot, 
Tim Dog for you, coming man. through. I got to add you on PlayStation. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely look forward to speaking with you again. And hopefully next oh. month is good enough to have your have, have your yeah yeah we'll come get, back your heart. <laughs> you know, I listen. I I, I don't I, I don't I, I I can definitely admit that I'm pissed off. Um, mm-hmm. and that's that that's just the way I am. I haven't turned my Xbox on. I'm being stubborn about it. That's again. You asked me why. I'm very stubborn. I'm you know I've always been stubborn. If something pisses me off or I don't like it. I kind of just I'm stubborn about it. So being stubborn about Xbox, um, but who knows? Let's. I I hate the constant negativity, and that was one of the things too. Being in my position was like, and you guys know, it's like you can't have a nice day. It's like every day there's something that comes out that's negative about Xbox. Mm-hmm. True, and yeah. it just like comes to a point where like. It's like it's just a constant defense of them, and it's like, can they just get a W and just you know, have their their time? And I, I don't know. I hope that uh, Hellblade Two does well, and uh, and I guess if if you know me being positive, I hope for the best. But it, I do think that um, some of this stuff, like we've seen this week, you're gonna have a couple more of these painful times. They gotta like reset themselves. And they gotta figure out a plan, how to uh, make it um, where the margins are where they need to be, and hopefully they get to that point. Yeah. Well, hopefully they do, man. Um, otherwise, if uh, uh, but they gotta be, also gotta be careful uh, because looking at a variance report for Microsoft to get those things up, it might require uh, shutting everything down before they r- recognize. Uh, uh, being in the uh, green again, and and they don't want to cut too off, cut too much off, uh, without realizing what they're actually cutting off. Sound like that actually happened right. when Matt Booty said we need games like Hi Fi Rush after shutting them down. <laughs> <That would be laughs> bad. All right, man, Attic, you got anything right, to say? Guys. You want to go? Freak it out? Nah, I appreciate you coming on, Tim. You know, one thing, even even when you was going nuclear on Twitter, man. I, I told people, man, when they were like super chatting IOP, I was like, there's always more to a situation than what's on the surface. Yeah. And you guys need to lay off a tip. <laughs> listen, I'm t- I'm a tough dude. I, I have tough skin, uh, thick skin. I, I, I listen, I know, listen, even with the PlayStation guys, they're all my friends now. I know it's not personal. I know it's just fans and, you know, people like to associate with the product or whatever. Um, or they want me to be a certain way. I know it's not personal, so don't worry about it. It's, it is what it is. Uh, I just had wished, um, I wished, uh, they did. I wish Phil managed it a little bit better. And, um, you know, I wish they, uh, they incentivized, incentivized, I can't even say incentivized. (laughs) I need you to help me with that. Uh, the console and, Really, the cutting of the market in Europe, you know, give, you know, if you don't pay attention to something and you don't emphasize it, you're going to lose it. And I think that's, that's what happened in Europe and kind of what's happening with the console base, Mm -hmm. you know. So we'll we'll see. I'll be back. We'll do a show after the, uh, or maybe during the week of, uh, I'll be free. Uh, We'll, maybe do something since we're let me ask on. you a question i i, I gotta snatch you now if i can so, would you be interested in coming on uh iop's reaction to to it he's probably gonna be away yeah oh okay no the six i probably could do it it's a sunday yeah because right? because uh, yeah it's it's gonna be I me can, and... uh, i could definitely do it but i can't st- i'll watch the thing and 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 give an hour after i can't do like six hours <laughs> like, <laughs> i know i know how uh it's just reaction it's not the podcast Okay, so uh, yeah, I could do that. But we'll watch it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you know you can get. I'll even let you go first, so you can just give your overall impressions. Then you can bounce like immediately. No, I don't. That's fine. I can talk for a little. I mean, I just know you guys sometimes run long. So, but that's because you guys are passionate, and I love that about you. So, All right. but um, great show, guys, and. Uh, I guess I'll see you on the um, 
reaction. Awesome. Looking forward to it, man. Thank you, Tim, right. man. See you around, man. Thank you, guys. Take See care. you, Tim. All right. Peace, guys. We're out of here. Weapon Will, Planet Xbox. Peace.